you going? Are you going all right? Yeah, I, Jesus, I've had a day. I mean, I mean, first of all, uh, I woke up. Yeah. Uh, and I turned on the news. Second mistake. You know, there's, you know there's a, there comes a time, I think, in all of our lives where we're, we're forced to confront the question, why am I only half drunk? <laughs> Such was a question that confronted me eating my breakfast. That's how bad things have gotten under Abbott. How depressing they've become. And the only way I can think to like really get home how important uh, events like this are and the, and the situation we face truly is, is who, who here is a parent? Who's, who's a parent? Yeah? Well, you'll agree with me that it's pretty much the greatest job in the world, yeah? It's pretty fantastic. You don't like it? Well, you know, like, it's got its stresses. It has its stresses. Any parent would be the first to admit that. But in the interest of honesty, I've got to say, like, I, personally, I'm actually, I reckon I must be just about the world's laziest dad. Like, I haven't even bothered to have a kid. I mean, that's how it's like I... It's like I am. I've been busy. There's a government to be depressed by. I don't have time for baby making. You know, like, um, not even just the government, politics in general. I mean, pol like, politics... Like, I don't know, the, you know, you probably see in the news this... The, the mayor of Toronto uh, has, has come out and admitted, yes, I smoked crack cocaine. When I read this, I was thinking, why, why is this news? Why is this in the news? I assume all politicians smoke crack. <laughs> How else do you explain the Australian Labor Party? <laughs> that, was, that was less than an election we just had. It was more a nationwide collective intervention. <laughs> you know, I mean, because at the point at which you, you reinstall Kevin Rudd as a leader, that is as clear a cry for help as I've ever seen. <laughs> and that, the scary thing is I don't think they've hit rock bottom. I don't think they have. We'll know, we'll know they've hit rock bottom when Paul Howes has made the leader. Like, that's when they've bottomed out. Uh, we fucked up as a nation. Well, let's, not, let's not shy away from it. We made big mistakes as a nation electing, electing, electing Tony Abbott. Uh, I think we quite clearly should have made Clive Palmer our Prime Minister. Uh, because if it's a choice, if you've got a choice, you ran for Prime Minister. You just run for Fairfax. He said, I'm running for Prime Minister. And if you've got a choice between right wing pro rich lunatics who are committed to practices that threaten to destroy all life on the planet, go for the one who builds giant robotic dinosaurs. Every time! Dinosaurs every time, people! What the fuck's wrong with you? You know, I mean, like, that was what was so depressing about the election campaign. Everyone was talking about, like, oh, how many boats under Labor? How many boats under Labor? Fuck that! How many dinosaurs did they build? Seriously, can they point to... I don't care if they're, if they're giant. Like, can they, I don't care if they're... Can Labor point to one? They couldn't. Clive Palmer, he went into that campaign having already built two giant robotic dinosaurs called Jeff and Bones at his Gold Coast, Gold Coast uh, resort. If we'd made him our Prime Minister, there'd be giant robotic dinosaurs in every street corner by now. I'm disappointed. Coalition, Abbott, no dinosaurs. Aside from Cory Bernardi. <laughs> but he's not one of the fun dinosaurs, is he? Like, you know, you don't see Cory Bernardi playing with little kids. Well, I hope you don't see Cory Bernardi playing with little kids. Like, you know, like, where they got the little plasticine, plasticine Corys. Go, you know, like, I, I, I hate gays. Don't, don't legalise gay marriage, we'll fuck our dogs. You know, you don't see that. And the, and the thing is, I don't want to romanticise proper di real dinosaurs. I mean, if you did meet a T-Rex in real life, you'd rip your head off. But I wouldn't judge your lifestyle, and that's the key thing, I think. <laughs> that's the key difference I'm trying to get across here, like, between the cool dinosaurs and Bernardi. Um, yeah, I think it, it is a dangerous, it is a dangerous time. Uh, we, we live in a quite a dangerous time, and that is why I wish you would all stop posting fucking inspiring quotes on Facebook. <laughs> you know, the sort of thing where they're always there, like a pictures of beautiful waterfalls or big, wonderful green fields, and over them they always say things like, be yourself, be, be you, be who you are, look inside yourself, find out who you are, and you be that person, because you're the only you in the universe, there's no you in you, so be yourself, and that's terrible advice, to give a bastard. <laughs> be myself, whatever, I'm a prick. Fine, you want me to be myself? Fine. Okay, sure. When your back said, I'm nicking your beer. Because that's me. That's who I am. I've looked inside my heart. That's what I've found. Someone, someone who will have sculled your beer before you even turn back around. But I don't do that uh, 
anymore. <laughs> because, because I've been socialised, which is the academic way of saying learnt the hard way. <laughs> then if I do that, you'll punch me in the face. <laughs> and so a social contract is maintained. I don't steal you. I, I repress my desire to steal your beer. You repress your even strongly held desire to knock my teeth out. And, and society goes on. But I can think of no group worse to do advice. It's most dangerous to tell to be themselves than politicians. Do you seriously, you want Tony Abbott to be himself? Really? You want Tony Abbott to see those Facebook things? The guy is a sexist, racist, misogynist who hates the poor. The God's sake. If you're listening, if you're watching this on Green Left TV, for God's sake, man, do not be yourself. Don't, like, get therapy, take some pills, try channeling Gandhi. <laughs> do whatever you do, just do not be the you as you you can. A lot of people were very, understandably very concerned. There was a lot of talk when, before the elections and straight up, a lot of people were saying, That's, I can't take this. Abbott, Abbott Prime Minister, I can't take it anymore. You know, he's going to make refugees work down the mines. He's going to personally eat what remains of the Great Barrier Reef while wearing nothing but Speedos. I'm out, I'm moving to New Zealand. I'm out here, I'm off to New Zealand. I've got to say, seriously, Phil, we've got to pull ourselves together. Move to New Zealand, come on, this is Australia. We're Australians. We should do things the Australian way and invade and occupy the bastards. <laughs> That's the issue. Like, seriously, the locals don't like it. We'll dump them P and G. We've got an agreement with the government for that kind of thing. That is, that's what... I feel like I've lost, lost some of the New Zealanders in the audience. <laughs> you know, it's... It is, and I think, I don't think... The other thing is, like, we, we have to confront this as, as, as you know, the left and... Uh, I, I think there's a tendency uh, in such a polarised situation. We do exaggerate sometimes. It's very easy to exaggerate. I, and I think, you know, if we're going to be honest, like, for example, uh, I mean, Will mentioned the, you know, Tony Abbott's cap. I mean, like, it is, Tony, people say Tony Abbott doesn't have enough women in his inner policy, in a, in a policy, in a policy making circles. Such people have clearly forgotten Gina Reinhardt. <laughs> I don't think she has a formal position, but uh, pretty soon she'll be, I think it's on the card, she'll be announced as the Emperor of all North, North Australia, so you know, she'll have a seat, the, have a proper seat. You know, and you know, she doesn't get a Jew. The someone who doesn't get a Jew is, is Gina Reinhardt, because people are like, oh, you know, she inherited all her wealth, you know, she's just a, a parasite who, you know, like, used that, you know, ripped off all our resources, destroyed the environment, and, you know, then lectured us all about how we should be working down a mine for two dollars a day. You know, you know, those people have never read her poem. I people remember her poem. Like she did write a poem. It was called Our Future. You wrote it last, like, wrote it last year. And I think the problem is we struggle as a nation. We still struggle with cultural cringe <laughs> <laughs> to appreciate quality art and culture. We're obsessed with sport. Like I think we are. Like you know, we we try as a nation to find our pride in a nation. Uh, in sporting achievements, which isn't good at the moment. It's, you know, cricket team's gone bad, uh, soccer rules are, you know, are worse. It, the the saddest thing this year was actually the greatest sporting star in Australia has um, retired, which is uh, Black Caviar. Um, <laughs> that was sad. I was, I was sad, but um, we will always have the memories. I, I'll always remember the, when she won that big race last year in England, uh, and the front page of the Sydney Morning Herald said, that black caviar had done Australia proud. <laughs> I read that and I just thought, am I the only one who's noticed black caviar is a fucking horse? <laughs> <laughs> done Australia proud? She doesn't know what Australia is. <laughs> black caviar does not grasp the finer points in the concept of a modern nation state. <laughs> black caviar remembers even less words of the national anthem than the rest of us. <laughs> cross tattoo. It's ridiculous. No, we should be prouder of cultural achievements. I think like things like some of the great works of fiction. Some of the great like Sydney's bus timetables. <laughs> we should band together and get a nominated for a Nobel Prize in Literature. It's, it's one of the all time great works of absurdism. <laughs> Fuck waiting for God, you try waiting for the 413. I mean, it's insane. <laughs> and you think we've got it bad? Actually, I mean, if you think we've got it bad, like, I mean, uh, 
I, I feel for Adelaide, the people I feel for actually are, are, are Adelaide. That, this might seem tangential, but stick with me. <laughs> I've got the mic and I have a choice. Um, no, I mean, because they, their buses don't... I, went, I was just got back from Adelaide. Their buses don't run on time. Uh, but they're worse. Like, they actually torture you in Adelaide with the bus tickets. They put inspiring quotes on their tickets. <laughs> this is true. This is actual Adelaide, actual Adelaide bus tickets. And this is what it says on the ticket. You're just trying to get home from work and you look at the back of your ticket. It says, if you see someone without a smile, give them one of yours. <laughs> depressed, what you want, more than anything, is an excuse to punch a fuck with. <laughs> it's, it's a bit more, this is, this one says you can't get anywhere unless you start, which is blatantly true, but if you don't know that, you shouldn't be on the bus without adult supervision. <laughs> You're probably not going to be holding the ticket to read it, like, this, other, this one actually, this, 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 arrangement, this one's quite profound, this one says, I couldn't believe what I read, actually, it's this one. <laughs> I should know that. No, this one says, this is philosophical, this one says, fear is a parent of cruelty. That is, that's, when I read that, I was, uh, I was frightened by its profundity. <laughs> but it was only when I started to kick the shit out of those cute little kittens, I realised how true it was. <laughs> and this one, this one says, uh, this is quite useful, this one says, uh, pleasant thoughts make pleasant lives. That's nice. Yeah. I want to give that one to an Afghani. <laughs> no, I do. Like, I just got to say, look, I understand. Look, I get it. I understand. I do. I understand. He lost half your family in a NATO airstrike and the other half the week before in a Taliban suicide bombing and now the Americans have lost the war in order to save as much base in Paris as they possibly can and negotiate and agree with the Taliban to bring them into share power with the fundamentalist, misogynist warlords. They were already back and so you can get the worst of both worlds. But, and if you dare try, I don't know, Lead to safety, try to come to this country in a boat. We're going to lock you up in death in the Pacific Island, horrific conditions. Uh, and even when you get out, probably just dump you on a third world country that has no capacity to provide you with a better life. I get it, I do. You're feeling stressed. <laughs> Here, read this Adelaide bus ticket. <laughs> some, are da- like some, some of them are dangerous, actually, like plain dangerous. This one says, this one says, your smile is the most important thing you wear. <laughs> no. No, no, no. That's not even legally accurate. You can take it from me. If you're standing there with no pants on, grinning at a cop doesn't help. If anything, I'd say it makes it worse. So we could be worse off. We could. Uh, but I was... Hey, I'm Gina brought a poem. That was a, a diversion from that. My point is, we have an appreciation. She's never got her due. And I don't know if anyone's read her poem. Uh, they would fully appreciate that. The, the, the power, I mean, she did write this. I mean, I haven't, you couldn't make this up. Like, you couldn't just invent this. But I have the poem here. Uh, Our future. Uh, I mean, do people actually want to hear? This is about our country, our future. Do you want to hear? One of the most important documents of our time. <laughs> our future by Gina Reinhardt. God save the Queen. <laughs> she doesn't get a mention. Does she? The globe is sadly groaning with poverty, death, poverty, and strife, and billions are now pleading to enjoy a better life. <laughs> Their hopes lie with resources buried deep within the earth and the enterprising capital which gives each project worth. <laughs> Is our future threatened with massive debts run up by political hacks who dig themselves out by unleashing rampant tax? <laughs> The end result is sending Australian investment, growth and jobs offshore. This type of direction is harmful to our core. (laughs) Some envious, unthinking people have been gone. The thick prosperity is created by waving a magic wand. (laughs) (laughs) Through too much 
with so much unfortunate ignorance. It's quite emotional. <laughs> Such unfortunate ignorance. Too much abuse is held against miners, workers and related industries who strive to build the world. Develop North Australia, embrace multiculturalism and welcome short-term workers to our shores. <laughs> to benefit from the export of our minerals and ores. <laughs> the world's poor need our resources, do not leave them to their fate. Our nation needs special economic zones and wiser government before it is <laughs> too late. <laughs> Gina Reinhardt. If, like me, you are a poetry connoisseur, <laughs> you will immediately recognise the revolution, the brilliance of the, the combination of rhyme and metre that she employs in that. <laughs> but it's not that I mean, you have to mind anyone who can get phrases like um, special economic zones and... Uh, forget that. What the hell else did she say? Join you know. foreign workers. Yes, I mean, get that in the poem. It's very rare to actually get that in the poem. So she deserves full credit. But it's not just that. It's the revolutionary idea she puts forward. Like, like she actually, in one breath in that poem, she calls on us to embrace multiculturalism. In the next breath, totally redefines it to mean her right to play, super exploit brown people down in mines for a pittance. And I, mean, I was pretty much against the reintroduction of virtual slavery. But when oars is so cleverly rhymed with shores, <laughs> I mean, she's one. It's not just me. It's, that's pretty. What that poem is pretty much the entire economic policy of the coalition government. <laughs> so anyone tries to tell you poetry can't achieve social change, <laughs> you point at the genius poem. Like that is, you know, uh, either that or you know the billionaires own the government. But you know, what are we fucking Russell Brand? Come on, like. <laughs> You know, it's not just, even even the, the way she got that poem published, I don't know if people know the story. Like, this is not a normal poem in any sense. It's incredible in every sense of the word. She didn't, she understands, you know, like, she, you know, she's going into it. She understands papers then. She didn't get published on paper. Uh, no, she didn't get published on paper. She got this thing engraved on a giant lump of ore which sits in the, in the markets in the Perth suburb of Morley. This is how far ahead she is of her time. She knows paper's dead, fuck that. She also knows once her practices destroy the ability of a sustained industrialised civilization capable of making the internet accessible, we'll all be back to fucking squirrelling old rocks. She's ahead of her time. <laughs> it's remarkable. I mean, that's why like her, like her uh, Clive Palmer, um, I mean, these people, they didn't get their wealth from their good looks alone, but from brain power. I mean, you look, only you've got to look politically at what Palmer has achieved. It's quite remarkable. He shows what you can do if you, you know, be willing to speak your mind, have billions of dollars, and will twerk. Uh, you know, and that's the thing, that's what I find so disappointing about the left. I mean, like, the total refusal to twerk in public. Like, it's... The Greens went down by 2%. I wasn't surprised. I didn't see Christine Mill M- twerk once. Do you think of Clive... Kyle Sandlin's radio show and shake her ass like mighty. Socialists, I wonder like the socialists in the election campaign, how serious they actually are. Show us your twerk colour. I'm not running for parliament, son. (laughs) Humanity doesn't need that. This is being filmed. Come on. There are children in the audience. But I'm not running for public office. I don't know. Like, like, I don't know. You see me like he's Peter Foyle here. You see? Yeah, Peter. Peter, it's a socialist alliance candidate for Sydney. You didn't twerk once. Are you, have you read the climate science? Do you know how serious this is? God's sake. I despair. And, but it, you know, the thing about it, I mean, all that aside, I mean, it really is. I mean, the election campaign we, we, we just went through and, and what we're going through, what we're going through, I mean, the, the election campaign before, we went through entirely defined by asylum seekers, and now, of course, the government's like, what's what's a boat? Um, yeah. Boats? I, I haven't seen a boat. What's a boat? I mean, you know, what are these boats? What are these boats you're talking about? The election campaign that they ran was basically the entire campaign, totally backed by the Murdoch media. It was like a game for children, it's like a, you know, the type of pantomime you do for children, where where they where, where they say like, what oh, do you see over there? Do you see? Do you see over there? Do you see them? Boat people. Boat people, they're coming, boat people are coming, they're coming for your jobs, they're coming for your homes, they're coming for, they're going to drink your milk, they're drinking your milk, boat people are there, look, they're drinking your milk, look, look, and you look, and then behind you back, Gina Reinhardt nicks all your stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and that shit's not renewable, I mean, once you let, what are you going to do, once you let, we let Gina 
Reinhardt, as we are, like dredge the Great Barrier Reef so she can export more of her shit to make her, so she can add more zeros to her bank account balance. I mean, what do we, how, once all that stuff's gone, how are we going to rebuild the, the, the tourist industry? And I mean, don't get me wrong, I mean, I, those, ba- those zeros on their bank account balance are one of the great wonders of the world. So she, you know, tourists just land in this country and take them straight to the bank. Show them Gina Reinhardt's bank account balance and say, did you see those zeros? Aren't they, aren't they amazing? Yeah, we used to have a reef, it was alright. Fucking check out those zeros. That's incredible. You know, and they deny it. Too. They deny. They try and deny that uh, they're in the pockets of, the, of, of big business, the governments. Uh, and sometimes it gets truly bizarre. Like, for example, last year, the WA Liberal Party, was a scandal where it turned out they were selling, uh, ministers were selling half-hour meetings with large corporations for $25,000 each. And when they got caught, the Premier said, that's not, we're not selling influence. It's just a fundraiser. Uh, <laughs> presumably, there's no, no better way to spend half an hour than hanging out with a WA Liberal, you know, like modern-day Oscar Wilde. Uh, but the thing is, I can think of one exception to that. Uh, we don't know if people remember Troy Buswell, the uh, treasurer. He's, this is the public WA Liberal treasurer. He, he got caught in the worst, the most bizarrely perverted sexual scandal ever for a politician. Because he got done for sexually harassing a staffer by snipping the chair she'd been sitting on and then riding on the floor in, in pleasure. Now, it's, he's a repeat offender with sexual... It's a scandal he's got his job, but you've got to admit... If you had a spare 25 grand, you'd be tempted to spend it with, on him just to see what he did. <laughs> you know, stories for the pub for ages. I mean, like, I swear to God, then he started trying up in the curtains. <laughs> what he did on that desk, I tell you, I never look at it a whole bunch the same way again. Don't ask me about that one. You know, but Troy Buswell aside, it gets a bit, it does get a bit, um, <laughs> a little, a little far-fetched. And they, they get more like the, the lies get more and more bizarre. They get the lie, yeah, you know, they have the lie. Um, they, you know, the election they started in the lead up to the election. Both sides of, of they started talking about economic refugees. They weren't asylum seekers anymore. They came from Iran. They're economic refugees. Like as, as though there's any ever ever been a bloke sitting in Tehran looking at his bills, going, oh, "I'm a bit short this week. Better chuck the family on a boat." <laughs> Risk our lives on a journey halfway around the world just to be imprisoned indefinitely. We haven't managed to get into the country or have on temporary protection visas, no, no family visas, and probably have to have all my qualifications ignored. I study for years at university just to go get a job clean and toilets and the minimum wage. Quick kids to the boat. <laughs> oh, but Dad, I, why don't we fly? I saw, why don't we fly? I saw, a, I saw really cheap flights on, on Jetstar. <laughs> oh, come on, mate. We're asylum seekers. We're not desperate. <laughs> you know, and it gets like, then they say the worst ones when they say, um, it, just to rub salt into the wounds, they then say, oh, we're doing it for the asylum seekers. We're doing it for them. We're just concerned for them. We're really concerned that this is a dangerous journey. We don't want to see them hurt. That's how much we love asylum. So we don't want, I just hope those bastards never take such an interest in my health. <laughs> they're, never just, they're never just told, oh yeah, yeah, you were about to cross a really busy intersection when the little man was still red. So we kidnapped you and dumped you on an isolated Pacific island in conditions <laughs> the United Nations has condemned as hellhole, breeding self-harm and suicide. And you get out, well you can't get out actually because you failed your ASIO assessment. So you're stuck there forever. No, don't, don't thank us. Don't thank us. Just, uh, just looking out for you, you know? You know, it gets the bizarre, the bizarre things. Also, I mean, in the lead up, like lead up to elections with the, the Murdoch. I read an article. I mean, the, the, the levels of hysteria and bizarreness to this. I read an article in the Daily Telegraph that did actually complain that a site that refugees were being allowed to watch TV. <laughs> uh, I must admit, I did kind of think they had a, had a point because these people have suffered. They don't, they don't need Australian morning TV in their lives. <laughs> You know, but, and I, but I did, you almost wonder whether they believed the sheer quality of Australian TV was what was attracting them. Like, you know, once they see Pack to the Rafters, they're all just, there'll be a flood. <laughs> they won't be able to hold them back. You know, well, I expected to read an editorial in the, the Daily Telegraph. I was waiting for their editorial. They said, we've got, now they're coming for our reality TV shows. They're coming for our reality TV shows. We've got to stop the boat. Oh, next year's winner of Australia. 
pay this next master block, lose her home, renovate it, wants a farmer to marry my boy. Could be called Muhammad, it's serious. <laughs> uh, but we know that this um this left this whole discussion left planet Earth a long a long time ago. The point at which I knew it left planet Earth was in 2010. Uh, they had Tony Abbott on Q&A and he was asked a question, as a Christian, Tony, uh, how, what do you think Christ, how do you think Christ would uh, deal with, with asylum seekers? And he said, this is a direct quote, he said, Jesus understood that there was a place for everyone and that place isn't necessarily Australia. <laughs> so, so Tony, I know you're a proud Aussie, but I don't think we made it into the Bible. <laughs> I mean, fair enough. But we all remember the fight. You know, the, the, his great finish to the Sermon on the Mount, and he said, "The meek shall inherit the earth." Oh, and by the way, before you go, don't forget, place for everyone, everyone in their place. Not Australia for you people. They don't like your kind. <laughs> and you wonder what version of the New Testament Tony Abbott's been actually reading. Like, I mean, like, presumably in Tony. Uh, New Testament according to Tony, Gospel according to Tony Abbott, rather than help the injured Jew on the side of the road, the good Samaritan starts kicking the shit out of him while shouting, fuck off back to Jerusalem, Jericho's full. (laughs) (laughs) You know, so, and I'm kind of, like, it's sort of hard to keep making jokes about it, so I'm going to stop making jokes and finish on a point that, I apologise for not finishing on a joke, but I think, like, it can be a very depressing time, but um, the fact that they lie to us, I actually think it might seem counterintuitive, but we've got to take heart from their lies. Because what it means is their system, they cannot tell us the truth about it. Because we would reject it. It would be rejected. People would not accept these corporate elites just destroying the planet to get richer. That's why they blame refugees. That's why they go through this whole charade. Uh, and while it can seem depressing because it's very hard to get the truth out, that really is our job to begin to face ourselves in the truth and mobilise around that. So I don't have to keep fucking making jokes about Tony Abbott on Q&A because I hate the prick. <laughs> uh, that's our task. First of all, though, I'm getting the beer. Thanks. I've been Carlos Sands. Carlos Sands. Thank you.